everyone. Welcome to episode three of The Poker Brief. I'm Kara Scott. We all know that Twitter loves a good flame war and poker Twitter, maybe even a little bit more so, but most never make it to the actual real physical world. Well, poker players Kate Hall and Mike Dentale are the exception to that. Now, in case you don't know, the whole thing started back in December when Kate Hall played a hand that even she admitted would look horrible when people saw the updates. Weirdly, lots of people on the internet had an opinion about that. One of them was Mike Dentali, who went straight for the jugular. He told her she was a bad poker player. She challenged him to play her, and the Heads Up grudge match was born. Now, for the record, I'm leaving out a lot of pretty hostile tweeting in there. Some other people getting involved, more arguments breaking out. The short version, it got ugly. But finally, the day that we'd all been waiting for arrived, and it wasn't so much Poker Christmas as Poker Festivus, and everybody knows that after the ceremonial airing of grievances, it's time for the feats of strength. Dentale tried to draw Kate up with some table talk, but she mostly focused on her game and she clinched the best of three early. So what does the winner have to say? I managed to get her on a quick Skype call. Hi Kate, congratulations first of all on your win. Uh, now a lot was made about how entertaining or not the matchup was for the viewers as though entertainment value was like the main point of this. So high, how high does it rank for you coming into something like this being entertaining? Yeah, so uh, walking away from the match, I felt like uh, I heard some people criticizing my personality and I was honestly pretty happy with that because in my experience, um, people are always going to be criticizing something about me and usually it's my play. Um, so having it be my personality this time was sort of a, an improvement for me um, and my sort of a, approach to the match was I'm I'm glad that people got some entertainment out of it and I I realized that that was a lot of the value for other people but for me it was an opportunity to like showcase my ability to play and to earn money um, and entertainment was sort of secondary for me. Well, I heard you talking on Doug Polk's podcast, and you said that one of the reasons you actually made the challenge was to hopefully get uh, Mike Dentale to stop commenting about you and about your play online. So do you think that's going to work? Do you think that there was ever a world where that would work? <laughs> um, you know, I think that I think that he will find a way always to criticize me because he just, he just hates me. Um, but I think that when he does it in the future, he's gonna have to contend with a lot of people saying, ha ha, what about Queen Five? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I think that I, I accomplished my goals as nearly as I could with this match. Okay, live tournaments and festivals for poker in Europe are going through a bit of a boom lately. With old tours being retired, new ones are popping up and everybody's trying to find the right path straight into the hearts of the players. The shock announcement that former EPT CEO John Duffy is now president of Party Poker Live definitely caught the industry's attention. He's long been a player favorite and he's been especially straightforward about his thoughts on stars and how the other major companies have been handling live events. Like everyone, I am really curious to see what he does with it all. And of course, 888 Poker is expanding their live poker offering as well. The company has said that they want to ensure the high quality of customer care at the event stays while still pushing to make things bigger and draw on the serious poker crowd as well. With exciting new locations coming up for 888 Live festivals this year, like Sao Paulo, there's something for everyone. As Stars said in a recent blog, competition is good for the industry. Well, a wider range of options is also very good for the players. So a few words on a vlog I've recently started following, and this really is news because generally I do not have the attention span for these things. Andrew Nimi started his vlog on YouTube last year, and it's quickly gained a lot of very loyal followers. He says he started the project because he wanted to add something more creative to his life, aside from simply grinding poker. Although he may eventually do something on Twitch, his heart is with YouTube right now, where he can come up with interesting cinematics and present a more polished, post-produced product to his audience. For me, watching the videos is a real pleasure. The production value is top notch, and I know that might sound not as important as the poker, but there are a lot of people out there like me, and if we're going to spend time watching a video, it better have good production values. 
but that doesn't come quickly. Andrew told me that each video takes a whole day of shooting followed by 8 to 12 hours of pure editing and that's not even including the time he spends answering questions and interacting on social media. It is a huge time commitment and it does give him less time for actual poker, but he says it's been worth it. He enjoys it, he's been able to interact with people from all over the world and putting his play out there to the public has also made him a better poker player. You can't just gloss over mistakes when reviewing sessions on camera. Plus, he's been able to work with his fiancée Boosie, who he says is the genius behind the design and operations of favorable apparel. He's been active in prodding poker rooms in Vegas to create more welcoming atmospheres for the new and nervous players. So, if you're thinking about playing live, I'd suggest watching some of his videos to help you feel a bit more comfortable with the whole process. And finally, the XL Series is back on 8 at 8 Poker as May sees the XL Inferno Championship running from the 7th to the 21st of May. The headline for this? It's bigger. They're massively increasing the number of events as well as upping the guarantees for the two-week festival. 197 events, 7.5 million in prize pools. You'll also have the chance to win your way to Vegas and the World Series of Poker main event through the Champion of Champions Tournament. Another big change is of a more charitable nature. 8 at 8 will host three tournaments during the XL series called Chip In. The fees from these three tournaments will all be donated by 8 at 8 to charity without, of course, affecting the prize pool itself. 8 at 8 Poker are working with Reg Charity, raising for effective giving, and the money will go to organizations in their global poverty charity portfolio. So for the players, they get the same prize pool as usual, but with the knowledge that the fees will be going to a good cause or causes. It's always great when poker gives back. You can check out all the details at 8 at 8 Poker online. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time on the Poker Brief.